meanings. Um, he because he asked, but the aren't thoughts and sounds and centers just an expression or waves made of consciousness? And, and I would like to say to that that to me this is like a highfalutin way of thinking about it. I would say it's more like this: consciousness perceives. And then when it perceives things, those perceptions get reflected in the mind or get reflected in our four centers. And then they get experienced as thoughts or emotions or sensations. So they're not really necessarily consciousness itself. Um, now, when you go all the way, when you peel all the layers of the onion off, all of them, every last one, and you now you're just without nothing, then yes, you could say it's all consciousness. But for our purposes, for now, um, we can say that they are... Consciousness perceives and those perceptions get reflected in the... and get processed by our four centers. And it's by virtue of that we develop this feeling of I. I don't know if that's behind your question, that's addressing your question, but... I mean, this is a classic, uh, let's say, direct path, non-dual statement that you said, where the master says thoughts and sounds are a modulation of being, where there is only one reality. So the thoughts, the feelings, the sounds, the computer and the clouds and the plants are what can they be <laughs> it's uh, all an expression of the one so from this point of view yes the thoughts and sounds and centers and the brain and the glasses and my zippo <laughs> is made of consciousness however now Believing this and landing the, with this early on, it can be stuck. It is just a thought. It's not useful. We are trying here to uh, help you verify some earlier, but absolutely mandatory step to go further, to realize the difference, the distinction between the perceiver, the perceiving, and the content that arises. So this is the first step, because usually in second state, the perceiver is asleep and is hooked, identified with everything. So somehow to first realize that there is the perceiving aspect, and then there's the content, the objects that come and go. And to keep coming back as the perceiver. As this is uh, kind of really uh, understood and experientially felt and is a reality, not a concept, then we can say, okay, so then what is this made thought? What is this thought made of? Well, it's obviously it's made of the same thing. And whoa, <laughs> yeah, but we, um, it's tricky. To put the heart or the, or the, or the horse, the cart before the horse. Yes. So it's all made of consciousness slash reality slash the Tao slash God. <laughs> but so it's all made of consciousness, but maybe that's like saying it's not all totally conscious. Yeah, computer is not conscious. But, yeah. And you, we could also say, if you want to speak theoretically, that uh, um, it goes back to this idea of observing. Anything that uh, well, all these things that exist, look around. None of them are conscious of existing. 
insofar as we know. Uh, nothing you can observe is conscious of itself. Or let's say if, if it has the ingredients, if it comprises the, its ingredients comprise consciousness, that consciousness is not conscious of itself. In the rock, the tree, the computer, especially man-made things, of course, but natural made. And this is an interesting way to look at the world, by the way. Look, walk, Take a walk and look around you and notice what is what did nature produce here? And what did man make? What's man made in your life? Uh, probably if you look around your home, you won't see much from nature. You'll see it all. It's all man made. Anyway, all of these things, they're not, we're, everything's made of the same substance. But the human being is unique in that this capacity for consciousness to realize itself as consciousness, that it's actually, its relationship to the source of all of this that is manifesting in all these forms, this is quite remarkable, seemingly quite rare in the universe. Can't say that with authority, but it seems to me, my perceptions have been, this is quite rare, very rare. It's really why human life is so precious not not in terms of the life itself, but as a vehicle for this consciousness. So everything you can see or nothing you can see is conscious of itself seeing. Nothing's looking back at you consciously. I'm sure this is true. What's interesting is if we are conscious, say each of us and we're together uh we can even it's even possible right now on the screen we can actually be conscious of each other being conscious of each other <laughs> it's quite beautiful quite special it's very subtle and it's not about us as people it's not these images on the screen there's a consciousness that's indefinable um and we're all here because we we sense it somehow that it's it's so it's more real more more significant than anything else and we want to it wants to know itself as itself more and more and more deeply more and more and more clearly without interference and that's a lot of what we're talking about is what is interfering with this it's deeper and deeper self realization clarity of self realization self consciousness Yeah, it's, it's, there are like more subtle, deeper aspects of the fourth way that go into more non-dual exploration. But from my experience, if one skips the foundation, then that becomes some kind of non-dual imagination. And the uh, new agey, ungrounded bullshit that has a strong spiritual flavor. And, you know, just to say this, is this issue of sentience, sentience, yeah? So um, there are studies, scientific studies where measurable that a plant is sentient, meaning that it is aware uh, and responds. <laughs> like also a hunt, somebody goes into the forest and cuts a tree. They can measure that the tree has some activity. And then actually the other trees in the forest are aware of something. Yeah. So there's this sentience. What Peter is talking about that. We are talking what we are here interested in is that, yeah, there's a sentience. Nature is sentient um, and alive. It's alive. But one brain being or two brain beings they don't have the that's what is said in the fourth way they don't have the capacity for self-consciousness and the human being it's a special kind of experiment and i'm not saying this as a human centric we are better than everybody then we should control things and do whatever the fuck we want and we are the boss and we are superior species no but somehow the creator 
<laughs> created all these life forms and it seems like it requires at least on this planet the pres the presence of three different centers to have the moving instinctive one sorry the moving instinctive the emotional and the intellectual to have the intellectual developed enough that through these functions god or the presence or the eye it becomes aware of itself that's what we are saying we are going to uh tomorrow when i'm going to make uh, release this video 